Hello, my name is Cherry Blaber, and I'm a Lead Technical Support Analyst in BMC Software. In this webinar, I will walk you through managing virtual marketplace entitlements in BMC Digital Workplace. Our agenda for today includes common tips my team shares on the following topics. Managing virtual marketplace entitlements including choosing the right type of entitlement and extending it to use custom fields. Caching of user entitlements, where I will share more on how it works by default and how you can interact with it. And finally, we will talk about avoiding common entitlement issues on catalog visibility issues and user-specific issues. I will now discuss how to use custom fields for entitlements. Often I get the question, is it possible to define a virtual marketplace that is restricted to managers based on their job titles? The answer is yes. You can create customized fields for virtual marketplace entitlements in CTM people. You just need to make sure the field types meet the following criteria to appear in the virtual marketplace. It must be a selection type field. It must be visible in the user interface. And it must not be a core field. And it must not be a display only field. Next, I will show you how you can add this type of custom field to CTM people and then have it appear as an attribute in the virtual marketplace. Let's start by logging in to Digital Workplace Catalog as a Catalog Administrator, then creating a virtual marketplace where we can add the custom field to. Let's call this virtual marketplace Manager Services. Then let's go ahead and add a few services to the virtual marketplace. I will select Order a Laptop and I will search for my new hire service. And also I will add Software Request. Now let's go to the attribute section and look at the other fields tab. This is where the custom field will appear once we've added it. And also looking at the list, I see that there's no job title type field that we can use out of the box. Now, if we log into mid tier and load city and people form, there's a field here called job title However, since this is a text field, we can't use it. So our next step is to log in to Developer Studio to create a custom selection type field for manager roles. Here I have CTM People form open. And to save us time, I have also pre-created the custom field called manager roles, which I have hidden from view. Now I will add it to this view. As you can see, this is just a simple selection type field with six values defined. However, this field does meet the requirements of being a selection type field visible in the user market in the user interface. It is not a core field and it is also not a display only field. Now I will go ahead and save this changes. And the next step is to flush the meters cache to ensure the custom field appears in CTM people form.
Now that that's complete, let's log in to CTM People Form to see if we can now see the custom field that we added. Now I have logged back into mid-tier and viewing CTM People Form where we can see the custom field is now visible along with all the roles that were loaded to this field. Next, let's go ahead and update a user named S. Adams to have one of this manager roles in his profile. Let's select Support Manager and save it. As a side note, depending on your needs, you can bulk update user records using your newly created custom field as well. Now, let's check the virtual marketplace to see if this custom field is available there now as well. Let's open Manager Services Virtual Marketplace and look at the attributes other fields and yes we can see the manager roles now showing as an attribute in this virtual marketplace i will go ahead and add all these roles to the virtual marketplace so that any users with this role in ctm people will see the services and just as a review we added the following services to this virtual marketplace, new hire, order a laptop, and software request. So the expected behavior is that users who are entitled to this virtual marketplace will see these services in their catalog when they log in to TWP. So let's go ahead and validate that. So I will now log in to DWP as the support manager, S. Adams, to validate that I can see the services added to the virtual marketplace using the custom field manager roles. And let's take a look at my catalog view. And yes, I can see the services that were entitled to me for Manager Services Virtual Marketplace. I can see new hire, order a laptop, and software request services. And that is how you can create customized fields for Virtual Marketplace entitlements in CTM People. Moving on to our next topic, choosing entitlement type. There are two types of Virtual Marketplace entitlements that you can choose from, local and ITSM attributes. So let's take a closer look at what each one means and how you can use them. Local entitlements are evaluated locally without using ITSM attributes. There are two types of local entitlements, everyone and users. When the everyone option is selected, all catalog users will be able to access the virtual marketplace. It will override any previous entitlements that may have been in place. The second one is Users. If you choose this option, you will be able to choose from the list of catalog users to add to the virtual marketplace. Local entitlement has the advantage of being fast and reliable since data is loaded directly from catalog. However, it is restrictive in that it does not provide many options for adding users. The other entitlement type is ITSM attributes. With ITSM attributes, you can add users to virtual marketplace using dynamic filters from CTM People Form. This connection to ITSM is done through the default remedy connection. These are the ITSM dynamic filters that are available, core fields, as well as other fields. The advantage of using ITSM att attributes is that it provides many options for adding users using CTM people fields. Its limitation is that it can be slower depending on the number of matches in ITSM people form and is subject to potential connection issues. Using ITSM attributes can be tricky, so we have come up with a couple tips based on the type of support requests that we receive on this topic. My first tip is to select attributes within a single category to add users. For example, 
You can select multiple organizations under the organization category. In this way, the OR logic is used. For example, Org1, OR Org2, OR Org3. This ensures that users from any of these organizations will be entitled to the virtual marketplace. My second tip is to remember that the AND logic is used when selecting attributes across multiple categories. For example, if using organization and cost center categories together, in order for a user to be entitled to that virtual marketplace, they must meet both criteria in their CTM people record. Now let's talk about caching of user entitlements. User entitlements rules are cached to optimize performance on the server. And the following items are cached. The list of virtual marketplaces that the user belongs to, the user login ID, as well as the JSON array of request IDs of the VMs. All items in the cache are refreshed by the following configuration refresh interval. By default, it is 3 minutes for the entitled memory cache refresh, and it is 10 minutes by default for the database entitlement cache refresh. Now, in some cases, you might need to manually invalidate or refresh the cache in order to resolve a problem or to see an entitlement update quicker. It is possible to do this in a variety of ways. You can use Innovation Studio by deleting individual cache from the Virtual Marketplace User Search Cache form. You can also do it through SQL Query by running a delete statement against the Virtual Marketplace User Search Cache table in the database. Or you can do it through REST API calls by using the following delete statements. For this webinar, I will demonstrate how to invalidate or refresh a cache using Innovation Studio. So I'm logged in to Innovation Studio to refresh a user entitlement cache. So from the workspace section, let's find Digital Workplace Catalog and open it. And then from here, we will search for the form name, Virtual Marketplace User Search Cache. Select that form and click Edit Data. Here you will see the list of items in the Virtual Marketplace User Search Cache. There is a column here named User Login. So if you're looking for a specific user to refresh the cache for, you can just filter using their user login. So for example, we'll use PPAN as our user, Apply. And once you've filtered for that user record, you can simply select and delete it to refresh or invalidate their cache. So once that user re-log in to Digital Workplace, they will see the most um, latest entitlements um, assigned to them. Also, there is no need to be concerned about deleting data from this form because it will get regenerated each time the user logs into Digital Workplace. Okay, and that's it. That's how you refresh a user entitlement cache using Innovation Studio. This final section of our agenda discusses avoiding common entitlement issues. A commonly reported issue is that users appear to have been added to the virtual marketplace, but they are unable to see the services in DWP, even though it appears they have been added to the virtual marketplace. You can avoid this issue by selecting attributes within a single category to add users to. The OR logic is used when, quali when qualifying the users. In this example, Users from engineering or facilities or finance or human resources will be added to the virtual marketplace and will see the services in DWP. However, when you add another category, such as cost center, then it becomes organization and cost center. So users will need to also have the cost center details in their CTM people record in order to be added to the virtual marketplace. It's good to remember when the AND and OR logic is at play when creating virtual marketplace entitlements. Another common issue reported is the loss of access to catalog services in DWP for some users. We have found that most of the time, this issue occurs as a result of a change in the login ID of the user in CTMP form. 
Please note that this applies to version 28 and earlier, and that this does not occur in later versions of DWP Catalog and Converge platforms, starting in version 21.3. When a user's login ID changes in ITSM, their entitlement in DWP Catalog will be affected. So when making changes to the ITSM login ID of a user, you should consider the impact on end users, the biggest of which is the loss of virtual marketplace entitlements. The user sync script initially copies the user details and credential information from Remedy ITSM into the DWP Catalog database. However, changes to user login IDs in ITSM are not merged into DWP Catalog database as merging the login ID is outside the scope of user sync. It is possible to restore the virtual marketplace entitlements through DWP Catalog Innovation Studio. This can be done as an individual update to a user entitlement or as a bulk update to a number of users through the Data Management Console. I have recently written a blog in the BMC community where I share how to restore user virtual marketplace entitlements via these methods. You can access the blog at the following link. I will also include this URL in the references section of this webinar. Next, I will do a quick demo to show you how you can restore the user entitlement of an individual user through Innovation Studio. Currently, I'm logged in to DWP Catalog as a Catalog Administrator. In this demo, we will take a look at how to handle a user whose login ID change in the ITSM CTM people form. Let's go to the DWP Catalog user directory. And let's click on Add User Role, which will load the user directory page. From this list, I can search for all users who have been added to the DWP Catalog by the user sync. Let's look up the, the user named Alan Border. In DWP Catalog, his login ID is showing as a border. However, when we look at the user CTM people record, he has an updated login ID. The new login ID for this user is a border one with a capital A at the beginning. Next, let's take a, a look at the user's entitlement in DWP Catalog. We can get there by clicking on services, entitlements, and entitlements by user. The user entitlement search pulls users straight from CTM people form. Therefore, if you search for the user here, you will see his updated login ID. However, when you click to view that user's entitlement, you will see that the user no longer has any entitled services. So to fix this issue for this user, we will log in to Innovation Studio for DWP Catalog. Since I'm already logged in to DWP Catalog as, as administrator, I will open Innovation Studio by simply opening a, a new tab in the same browser window and typing the Innovation Studio URL which is as follows. Once logged in, we will go to the administrations page. And from here, we'll access foundation data and manage people. I will search for the user in question. And we don't see the user here. So let me search for just his last name. And I can find him. Now let's click on edit. And we'll go to access details. And from this page, this is where you can edit login ID to match the new login ID in ITSM CTM people form. So I will go ahead and update the user's login ID. So when making this change, take caution when changing the login ID and ensure it's a correct match with the new CTM people login ID. And also do not make any other changes on this form. And the next step we're going to check is the other details and just to ensure that the status is set to enabled.
Once that's done, click on Save. Now that that's done, I will open the user form of Innovation Studio just to validate that the user login ID from user form is also updated. By the way, I've noted all this URL in the blog so you can get the specific details for the URL format in the blog as well. So uh, let me go ahead and search for the user. So Alan Border is here and we can see that from the user form, the login ID has changed as well. If in case the login ID does not automatically change in user form, you can also update the user here directly. Now let's go back to DWP Catalog and search for the user entitlement. Refresh this page and let's search for Alan once again. And you'll see that the user login ID has now updated to A border 1. And let's go ahead and take a look at the user's entitlement. Now you can see that all the services that were previously entitled to the users have been restored. And another quick check is to look at the user directory in DWP Catalog to ensure that the login ID has changed there also. And it has. The other option for restoring the user virtual marketplace entitlement is through Data Management Console and User Sync. This option is helpful when many users are impacted by the change. By using the data load feature, you can delete the old login IDs from the DWP catalog database in bulk. Then you can run the user sync to re-add the users with their updated login IDs to DWP catalog. And I provided the steps for doing this in the blog as well. Another issue that causes entitlement problems is regarding the user sync not running. To avoid this issue, Ensure that the user sync cron job is scheduled to run on a daily basis. After the first time you configure and run the process, you can set up a cron job to run the task automatically at specific times. We recommend to set it up once per day as the process can impact server performance. A good rule of thumb is to schedule the sync job after your daily import of users into ITSM. This ensures that new users are added to the DWP catalog as soon as they are imported into ITSM. If the user sync is not running as expected, you can review the user sync logs to identify the error that might be causing that issue. Here in the screenshot is an example of a user sync schedule on a BMC SAS environment. In BMC SAS, the user sync is generally scheduled to run at 2 a.m. UTC every day. There's a cron job schedule editor that I find helpful for creating the cron job schedule. You can find the URL here. Um, it is crontop.guru. So you can look at that site and it helps you create um, schedule for your cron job. And that concludes our webinar today. Here is a quick summary of what we learned in this webinar. Managing virtual marketplace entitlements, including choosing the right type of entitlement and extending it to use custom fields. Caching of user entitlements, including how it works and how to interact with it when needed. We also talked about avoiding common entitlement issues, including a few common catalog visibility issues and user sync issues. So thank you for joining and I hope it was helpful. The next slide shares links to more information on each of these topics.